In today's Daily Dose of Math, we're looking at a few examples of the question, what is the best measure of central tendency, where we have to justify our answer. In another video, I explained that if we ask ourselves these two questions, then the answers to the questions tell which of mode, mean, or median we want to choose as the best measure, and the answers to the questions also justify our choice. Let's put this to the test with a few situations. Here we have a set of data, which is how many cherry tomatoes are produced by a bunch of plants in a garden. We ask question one, is the data quantitative or qualitative? This is quantitative, it's numbers. So that means we're not going to choose mode. Instead, we move on to question two. Is the data symmetric or asymmetric? Well, in this case, I have to look at the data a little more carefully to be able to see that this is asymmetric data because there are a lot of values clustered between 45 and 53 with only a little bit of data that is larger than 53, the 54 and the 55. But lower than 45, we have quite a few values and they're spread out quite far. We have 42, 40, then we skip all the way to 31 and then several in the 20s. So what that tells me is that there is a long tail on the left side, on the side with the lowest numbers. And that tail is not balanced off by a long tail on the right side going with the highest numbers. So this data is asymmetric. That means I'm going to choose median. My reason, because the data is quantitative and asymmetric. Now let's look at another example. This is about bean plants this time, and it's the heights of the plants in centimeters. We look at the data and we ask ourselves question one, is the data quantitative or qualitative? It's quantitative again, it's numbers. So we move on to question two, and that means we're not going to choose mode. Question two, is the data symmetric or asymmetric? It looks a lot like the data from the cherry tomatoes, except this time, that long tail of values on the left side of the graph, among the lower numbers, is balanced off by a similar long tail of values on the right side of the graph. This data is roughly symmetrical. So therefore, I'm going to choose mean. My reason, because the data is quantitative and symmetrical. One more example. Here, I'm doing a survey among students as to which classroom we should have our math class in next year. The students are choosing from a bunch of choices. And we can see that 203, which is where I'm already teaching this year, seems to be the most popular choice. Five people have voted for it. Now we have to ask ourselves the question, question one, is this data quantitative or qualitative? Well, it looks like numbers, but this is a trick question. It's not. The room numbers that are used for classrooms aren't really used as numbers. Finding the average of those numbers, for instance, would not mean anything. This is qualitative data. These room numbers are acting much like names. So therefore, the data being qualitative means we're going to choose mode. And our reason on choosing mode because the data is qualitative. This has been a few examples of how to choose the best measure of central tendency and justify your answer. It is today's daily dose of math. Please like, subscribe, and share.